So for your weather photos, we did have a gorgeous sunset sent in by Jerry. Love it. Again, screams Lion King to me. So like it even more. <laughs> it really does. And then we had some frost captured by Bethany. You could see it there on the grass, patchy oh, no. frost. So we did definitely have a cool night Saturday night, and we're even having another cool morning this morning. So I was like, you said the word I didn't want to hear this time of year, which is frost. I know. At least we're it. not. I didn't say the S word yet. So thank goodness. No Let's keep that one <laughs> far away, Claudia. Yes. Thanks for sending in these photos. Well, your 13 news time. It is 6:43. Coming up, a group of American missionaries been taken captive in Haiti. We'll tell you which known criminal group is behind the abduction up next in our morning rush. But first on this day in history, October 18, 1867, the U.S. takes formal possession of Alaska from Russia, paying $7.2 million. We'll be back in just two minutes. You're watching 13 News Today with Evan Leak, Maggie Polsey, Cassandra Bredo, and meteorologist Claudia Olek on your weather authority. Welcome back. It's time now for the 13 News Today morning rush. 17 people, including children associated with a U.S.-based Christian aid group, Christian Ministries, were kidnapped in Haiti Saturday. The group was in Haiti, Haiti visiting an orphanage when the kidnapping took place. Haitian authorities say the group behind the abductions is one of the most dangerous criminal gangs in the nation. The State Department acknowledged in a statement that they were aware of the reports, but offered no other details. At least five people shot after a weekend of gun violence in Houston, Texas. The first incident was reported last night around 6 p.m., but Houston police aren't sure of the motive. Authorities are also looking into another shooting that happened a short time later, but a mile away from the first scene. Houston police believe the two incidents could be connected. In Pennsylvania, authorities are investigating a shooting that injured four people following an altercation at a mall. Police responded to the scene yesterday afternoon after reports of shots fired. Three men and one woman were hit by gunfire, but none of the injuries are said to be life-threatening. Lancaster police have not made any arrests yet, but they believe a single suspect was responsible for firing all the shots. Just in this morning, a new study indicates that lottery incentives fail to encourage people to get vaccinated against COVID-19. Researchers looked at vaccination records on 19 states that entered people into a cash drawing after they got vaccinated between the end of April and beginning of July. The researchers observed no statistically significant associations between the lotteries and vaccination rates. They also speculated that lotteries may be less enticing than actual cash for vaccines. 
The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has been saying that getting the COVID-19 vaccine can save your life and new data backs up those claims. According to the CDC, unvaccinated adults are 11 times more likely to die from COVID-19 than fully vaccinated adults. They also faced six times higher risk of testing positive. For those analysts, the CDC gathered data from 14 states representing 30% of the population. More Americans experienced pregnancy complications during the pandemic than in 2019. Researchers looked at nearly 325,000 pregnancies in 2019 and 2020. They determined the pandemic impacted a significant number of patients in the U.S. beginning in March of 2020. But they say they do not know if it was an actual COVID-19 infection that impacted the pregnancies. Your 13 News time at 648. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg predicts that the supply chain issues facing the U.S. will continue into 2022. Look, uh, part of what's happening isn't just the supply side, it's the demand side. Demand is off the charts. Retail sales are through the roof. And if you think about those images of uh, ships, for example, waiting at anchor on the West Coast, you know, every one of those ships uh, is full of record amounts of goods that Americans are buying uh, because demand is up, because income is up. Buttigieg's comments come as President Biden's $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill makes its way through Congress, where it has already passed the Senate but is now stalled in the House. Former President Bill Clinton left the University of California Irvine Medical Center yesterday after spending six days fighting a non-COVID-related infection. So you can see he took a moment to give a thumbs up to the media members to show how much he was feeling better. The former president's aide said Clinton responded well to his treatments, which included antibiotics and fluids administered by an IV. The Clintons were in California hosting fundraisers for the Clinton Foundation. Beijing 2022 Olympics flames was lit at Greece's ancient Olympia today. The ceremony comes just over 100 days before the start of the Olympics on February 4th. Beijing will become the first city to host both the winter and summer games. However, protests over the country's human rights records have clouded the run up. The Coast Guard and the National Transportation Safety Board have identified a party of interest in the Orange County, California oil spill. Investigators boarded the Meridian Shipping Company on Saturday. They determined that on January 25th of this year, during stormy weather, the vessel dragged its anchors in close proximity to a subsea pipeline, which was discovered to be the source of the Orange County oil spill earlier this month. The Coast Guard has designated the MCS Mediterranean Shipping Company parties of interest to the investigation. Hertz is making a move to go public again this fall after the rental car company emerged from bankruptcy this summer. Hertz continues to profit from record high rental car rates as demand for travel has returned following the pandemic. Hertz has officially filed paperwork with the Securities and Exchange Commission for an internal public offering as it continues the rebuild. Walmart announced that it's bringing back its month-long deals for days in November. Instead of one sale that traditionally begins on Thanksgiving, there will be three different events online in stores. The first sale starts online November 3rd and then in stores on November 5th. Walmart is spacing out its Black Friday deals for a second straight year since stores will be closed on Thanksgiving due to the pandemic. Starting today, we want to give you a way to get some food and some frozen treats early this morning. All you have to do to enter for a chance to win two baskets and two concrete mixers from Culver's is just call our contest line. Find day giveaway starts today and it goes through Friday. And for your chance to win, make sure you call that line at 815-335-7899 after 7 a.m. And now Hoda Copy joins us with a preview of what's coming up next on the Today Show. Good morning, guys. Coming up on today, we'll have the very latest overnight on the race to find and free those kidnapped American missionaries in Haiti. What we're learning about the efforts to bring them home and the powerful gang behind the crime. Also ahead, Jenna's inspiring conversation with the first woman picked to lead the iconic Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. Wait until you hear about her surprising path to the top in that male-dominated field. All that plus the pioneer woman, Reed Drummond, will swing by Studio 1A. She'll share her super easy ideas for dinner and dessert, including her recipe for top secret chocolate cake. And we see you in just a bit, right here on Today. 15 years time, it is 6.52. The sun is finally starting to shine. It's going to be a beautiful day for you on your Monday. Make sure you stay with us for one last check of weather and your morning rush as we continue the rundown of your top news headlines. But before you head out the door, make sure you have the 13 News app on your phone. You can stay informed on all the local and national news you need to know all throughout the day. We'll be back in two minutes.
Welcome back. It's time to continue the 13 News Today morning rush. A shooting over the weekend leaves one woman dead near Alpine Road. The incident took place yesterday at the 4400 block of Lori Drive. Killed a 36 year old woman, according to Rockford Police. RPD has not said what led up to the shooting and if there are any suspects or anyone in custody. This marks the 20th murder of 2021 in Rockford. Jury selection will begin today and the murder of men, three men accused of killing Ahmaud Arbery in February 2020. More than 1,000 potential jurors are expected later this morning. Jury selection is expected to take up to two weeks in the trial of the father and son, Gregory and Travis McMichael, and their neighbor, William Roddy Ryan. The CDC is issuing holiday-related mask guidance. The agency's number one advice is to get the COVID-19 vaccine before gatherings or travel. CDC stresses that people should still wear masks indoors, especially the unvaccinated. Outdoor gatherings are still considered more safe, but that may get tricky when the weather gets colder. The Justice Department is planning to ask the Supreme Court to temporarily block the controversial abortion ban in Texas. DOJ wants the, halt, the law halted while legal challenges play out. This comes after a federal appeals court ruled Thursday that the ban could remain in effect after district court temporarily blocked it. The law bars most abortions after six weeks and also allows private citizens to sue providers or anyone who assists women in having the procedure. Early this morning, those temperatures definitely feeling a lot cooler like fall, like we saw those fall like conditions this weekend. But as we head into this afternoon, really the first half of your week, we are going to see those above average temperatures stick around. As for your morning, still hanging on to the upper 30s, still seeing the lower 40s over in Dixon, but definitely a cooler start to your Monday. As for the rest of the day, though, we are going to see clear skies stick around and a lot of that sunshine coming in, hanging out with us for really a majority of your Monday. However, those temperatures are going to quickly warm through the morning hours already into the upper 60s before lunchtime and lower 70s expected for your afternoon. So we are definitely in for an above average day. Those temperatures are going to be about 10 degrees above what we usually see this time of year. So 72 degrees for your high. Lots of sunshine today as we feel much warmer this afternoon. Heading into the overnight hours though, we drop into the upper 40s. So even a little warmer night ahead, staying clear skies as we do see a quiet Monday night. As for the rest of your week, we see yet another day of above average temperatures really through Wednesday as a cold front brings in some of those showers, ushering in some of the coolest weather we have yet to see this season. 50s, middle 50s dropping into the latter half of our week, but we do stay dry into our weekend. So an even cooler weekend ahead as we bring back a couple rain chances and the 60s into that extended forecast. So a little bit of warmth and sunshine to get through, but that's definitely not something to complain about. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> this is the perfect fall weather and we are so looking forward to having an entire week of it, Claudia. Exactly. Thank you so much for that one last check of weather. We'll leave you with the beautiful sunrise here this morning. Have a great rest of your day. The Today Show is coming up next.